Not, not as fun, YouTube family, not as fun. This video is replacing the weekly live stream, but we are banned right now from live streaming on this channel. Oh well, we're in the penalty box. We march on, we're not gonna give up. I'm still gonna answer your questions despite not being able to live stream with all of you. Hopefully I hear back from somebody from Flow Sports or from YouTube. Nobody's really replying, I'm not surprised, but I'm hoping for a retraction from that copyright claim or at least letting me know exactly why we got the claim, if it was just the screen, or was it more than that? For example, me actually talking about a live event on the channel, uh, the Boston Marathon. So we shall see, uh, but we're gonna dive in and I'm gonna answer questions from the box, answer questions from Instagram, email, and we're just gonna have as good a time as possible even though it's not live, I do apologize. All right, here we go. Diving into your questions, and again, you can email me, everyone that's new, you can email me your questions about running, about training, about uh, workouts, about running shoes. I can't always respond because I don't have time to answer every question uh, as far as a typed out email email, but if I don't, I will put it in the box and we will get to your question eventually in the live streams eventually or the weekly, uh, the weekly videos like this one. Okay, diving in here. This is from Keegan. I want to run a hundred mile race next year. Can anyone help me for some training tips? The longest run I do now is about 15 miles, so I got a long way to go. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, sorry, that is not from Keegan. Sorry about that. This is from Jeffrey uh, on Demore Global Running. So this question came in through tw uh, Strava. Jeffrey, um, so I would start by working up to a 50K, even a marathon, but a 50K, so 30 miles, and then a 50K race, and then eventually a 50 mile race, and then start dreaming about a 100 mile, okay? Take it easy. Don't rush it. I've learned the hard way kind of about 100 mile races. I tried one in 2018. I DNF'd. I had to drop out. Um, I would also recommend for, I, I don't think it's about volume in 100 mile racing. I think it's about quality and I also think it's about uh, hill work. I think it's more about strength. So making sure your legs are really solid. Uh, you're not getting injuries by by uh, running higher volumes, but I'm telling you the hill work, and I don't mean hill repeats, I mean like going out for two, three, four hours through hills, up in the, and like on trails, not on dirt roads, but just hills. Even if you're going 12 minute pace, 14 minute pace, 16 minute pace, just get those hills in up and down. It's amazing how much down hills can mess up your legs in a long, long race. So um, that would be my first tip. Work into it, 50K, 50 mile, even 100K first before 100 mile and hone in on those hills. Okay, good question from Jeffrey. And next question, here we go. Let's see. Uh, okay, this is from Adrian on Instagram. He says, I appreciate the encouragement and how did you get so fast in high school? I was wondering if you could give me some pointers on how to get faster over the summer. Because my goal is to break 17 in the 5K next year and my PR from last season is a 1930-ish and I have a lot of time to cut. Adrian, that is quite a bit of time, uh, but I, you can do it. Let's see, 19, uh, sorry, doing the math here. You want to break, did you say break 17? So two and a half minutes you need to cut. Um, Adrian, always the easy answer for getting faster is to increase your miles but it's all about the timing of when you're increasing your miles. So summertime is the perfect time to build up your volume. Um, I think though, I've seen it many, many times in high school cross country where runners are peaked out too early. So you have to ask yourself, talk to your coach, when do you wanna peak? Are you peaking in the middle of the seasons to ch chase down a PR? Or maybe your team is contending for a state championship and you need, a, you need a peak right at the state championship late in the season. So that's something to consider. When are you gonna peak? When are you gonna kind of strive for that, that fast, fast PR time? Um, so that, and that will impact when you're going to start to sharpen and really get, you know, get fast, go anaerobic in your workouts, uh, work on the power and speed of your legs, uh, since it's a 5K, you do need to you need to be fast. Like 5Ks nowadays in in high school, they're just they're fast. They're fat. You got to be able to get out the gate and hold your pace for a good chunk of time. So um, miles in the summer. I okay. I'm gonna. T it was Adrian. I think Adrian. I promise you and everybody else watching. I'm gonna make a series of vlogs, videos in 
basically May, after the Cleveland Marathon, I'm gonna make a series of vlogs and videos dedicated just to high school cross country runners wanting to race faster in the fall and what I would do as a coach and or as an athlete leading up to the cross country season in August, basically, when everyone starts getting going with meets. So that's coming. Stay tuned for that. Good question, Adrian. I'm really, really excited for that series of videos. I hope it, I think it's really going to help because I, Adrian, I get this question from a lot of high schoolers out there. Okay, moving on here. Here we go. Uh, this is from Arnold. Okay, it's pretty long. Listen to this here. Uh, so, I'm emailing because I have a question. I watched your video on recovery and noticed you mentioned active recovery. It got me thinking, gee, I wonder how much I walk around. A little bit about me, I'm a lobbyist in Texas. I work exclusively lobbying for veterans here in Texas. Excuse me. My organization helps veterans find jobs. Good job. Great job helping out the veterans, Arnold. Uh, utilize their benefits, submit claims, start a business, get an appointment at the VA, etc. We work in everything veterans in my job is to see that the state legislature keeps up in business. He goes on, uh, one day I checked my Apple watch and I had walked eight miles in cowboy boots, of course. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of course, Texas. This past week in particular, I ran 20 miles, but I also walked 20 miles at my job. I'm starting to feel absolutely beat. This next month, I have a 10K race, but I am so tired and I'm starting to feel like I might get shin splints. Do you have any thoughts for someone like me that has a very active job? Awesome, Arnold. That's amazing. Arnold, you really got... So... I would put something in those cowboy. If you have to wear cowboy boots, I would put something in those cowboy boot, cowboy boots that helps give you more cushion. There's like inserts you can put in. Uh, what is the? Oh my gosh, I'm spacing on. I actually have them in my shoes right now. Why can I not think of the name of these? Uh, it's this little green Spenco. There you go, Spenco. It's just a little extra cushion that I would put in your cow cowboy boots, and I would recommend trying not to uh, trying not to walk around eight miles a day in cowboy boots. That would be one place to start, but I get it if it's part of your job and it's like, yeah, I get it. it, you know, it's Texas. Okay, let me just put this back in. Basically, I would also recommend uh, stretching throughout your workday. And I know it's a little strange, you know, if you're at, but like take five minutes twice a day and just stretch wherever you're at. Even if you're in your work clothes, just find a spot and just stretch your hamstrings, your, your, your quads, everything. Just stretch for five minutes. It might be all the time you have. So that'll be 10 minutes out of your day that you dedicate just to stretching. And one last idea, Arnold, I would really make sure if you are trying to do a workout, I would really make sure that you put extra time into the warm up. So it, not meaning more running in the warm up. I usually go like two miles in a warm up before a workout, maybe three if I if the legs feel more fresh, but then just really focus on that stretching, rolling out with a foam roller and just make sure those legs are really awake and alive before you start the workout. Um, so anyway, uh, those are a couple ideas, Arnold. Thanks for helping the veterans, that's awesome. And uh, gosh, I hope that helps. Yeah, feel free to email me back if you want more. Okay, diving back in here, here we go. Oh man, I do miss you guys. I, it's a lot more fun when it's live, but we're doing our best here. Okay, this is from Katie in the UK. It's kind of long. Let me just try and break it down here. Uh, she is still sort of new to running, started last July, and she's done a couple half marathons. Congrats, that's awesome. Um, she's running Chicago in October, her first marathon. And let me just see here. So she's basically asking for recommendations for shoes uh, for a longer run, shoes, and then also shoes for eff uh, faster efforts and speed work that are lightweight. Um, let's see. Yes, there's a lot, and that's from Katie in the UK. Okay, so she's looking for a long run shoe. Katie, um, I'm really enjoying, I must say, the Pegasus 35 Turbo. It's nice. Some people don't like it. They feel like it's a little too mushy and or not quite a lockdown feel through the upper in the Pegasus 35 Turbo from Nike. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I was hoping that the Nike Vomero 14 was going to be in my long run shoe in 2019, but it's just not working out for me. Um, let me just think real quick here. So just so you know, Katie, the winner, the lady winner of the Boston Marathon just last uh, couple days ago, she was wearing the Adidas Audios 3, not the Audios 4, the Audios 3. So that's amazing. So if you're looking and you feel like you're healthy and you and they're they're 
the Audios 4 is like $130, $140 right now. I bet it's even cheaper if you look around. Um, so that would be a, a marathon racing shoe option that I would really look at. Uh, but of course, if you want to go way more expensive, there's the Vaporfly 4% from Nike, uh, Flyknit. And then also uh, the Zoomfly Flyknit from Nike, which again, it has a different foam compared to the Vaporfly. It's a React foam that has more density to it. So you'll get more miles out of that shoe. The React, uh, the React foam, and um, and then if you like a shoe that has a little lower drop, I'm actually slowly coming around to the Hoka Carbon Rocket, and I would say you could do all of these shoes that I'm mentioning. Basically, you could do tempo work in uh, on the roads. I don't know if I would do like a fast track workout. I would so for a fast track workout, I would look at well, actually, what I ran in today, the Saucony Fast Twitch Eight or Nine. The Fast Twitch Eight is definitely more affordable. I'm really I'm kind of excited about the Fast Twitch 8, actually. Uh, and then uh, for a little more cushion and a little more support, the New Balance Zante 4 I'm enjoying. I haven't tried the Pursuit yet, the, Zant, uh, the New Balance Zante Pursuit, but uh, the Zante 4 I'm really enjoying. So I would take that on the track for a little more up-tempo uh, workout. Uh, yeah, uh, they, they both worked out well for me on the track. So good question, Katie. Thank you. I hope that gives you some ideas. That's a lot. I know that's a lot to process right there. Uh, but you just got to, yeah, hop on. the. Actually, what I would recommend, go on to this channel and start searching for all the shoes I just mentioned. And I really break down all the shoes in detail. So go check those. Actually, I'll try and remember to put the cards in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, moving on. I think I missed one question. There it is. So this is from Simon. Uh, basically, Simon is asking about how to build up his aerobic fitness uh, leading up to a half marathon in October. So his half marathon is seven, is seven months from now in October, basically six to seven months. And his personal best is a 138. So what I would recommend, Simon, is that's a long ways away. I would not focus on that race right now. Now, it's always good to have peak races in your calendar. You know that. I love, I love having peak races. But Simon, I would break the next seven months down into at least two and maybe three races between now and then just to keep the competitive juices flowing, the mental fun. So it's fun to race. It's kind of difficult to train a lot and not race because it's like that's the Super Bowl of our sport. That's a Christmas day for our sport. It's like towing. It's like baseball players play baseball every day. Basketball players play four to five times a week. Runners, we don't race that that you know that often so i would recommend simon a 5k in june a 10k in in august maybe september and then shoot for your half marathon in october and as far as building up your fitness um i would let me just think for a second um i don't know what your volume is at but i would say have a miniature peak um yeah i would say have a miniature peak for your 5k in june or july late june early july and then have a bigger peak in volume, so how much you're running in a week, in late August, early September, and then rest for a week, and then ramp back up just a little bit, and then start hitting that speed work in September, getting ready for the half marathon in October, depending on if it's early October or late October, will help, uh, Im will impact when you start doing that speed work. Um, as far as, I'll just shoot you a number, I would recommend at least, gosh, at least, you want to hit at least a 10 mile run. And I, I just don't know who you are, but if, if you can get, um, it sounds like you're a little more advanced. So I'm going to say if you can hit a long run of 14 miles, 15 miles, uh, twice a month, that's going to set you up real nice for your half marathon. Like I think, and again, I don't know how old you are, but that's my, that would be a rough number to shoot for for a long run. Um, I'd say that's kind of like a minimum for that I would shoot for. So, okay, moving on. Hold on. Just drop my phone. Moving on to Instagram real quick. I, this question just came in. Let me just find it here. And by the way, Seth James Damore on Instagram, you can, you can look me up there and I will do my best to respond to you. This just came in from David. Hey Seth, I was wondering what shoe you would current, you would recommend for my case. I currently have the ultra paradigm 
4.0 and have worn it out and want a shoe with a little more responsive feel, I will mainly use it for my Army PT that we do three to four times a week. We usually run three to five miles on roads and I usually do speed work in my free time to improve my two mile time for the PT test. Thanks, love the videos and good luck up, Good luck with your up, with your marathon coming up. That's from David. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you for serving in the army and good question. Uh, let's see here. You're in the ultra. So I don't know if you're a zero drop fan. You're looking for something that's a little more responsive. So I'm actually gonna just piggyback on what I told Katie. I'd recommend the Hoka Carbon Rocket. Yeah, the Hoka Carbon Rocket. It's a one millimeter drop. So uh, all ultra shoes are zero, as you know. And so if you like that lower drop feel, I would go with a Hoka Carbon Rocket. It is, I would I, I would bet big, big money. It's way more responsive. Cut Why? It has the carbon fiber plates inside the shoe. But of course, it's a little more expensive. I think about $160 right now. Um, I'm guessing the Ultra Paradigm is around $135 right now. I don't know exactly. Um, so, but boy, that would be my idea for you. The Hoka Carbon Rocket or the Zante 4 from New Balance. Yeah, I think you could put some miles into that shoe. I'm really enjoying that shoe. Um, but only if you feel like you're strong and healthy because it doesn't have a ton of cushion. So again, if you're running on dirt or if you're running on pavement, that will also impact how many miles you want to put into the Zante 4. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Good question from David. And let me just take one more from Instagram here. Um, I think this came in from, there we go. Okay. This is from, uh, yeah, this is from another gentleman. I don't know his actual name and I won't say his Instagram name in case he doesn't want it out there, but he basically asked, Hey Seth, me again. Uh, is it a thing that you can feel too springy when trying to run slow? I've always been speedy, but really struggle to slow down as I feel I'm just bouncing on the spot. Have you ever heard of anyone else describing this sort of thing? How can I work on correcting it? So my brother and I actually just talked about this, uh, the other day. Basically, um, and this is actually kind of my brother's idea. He said, um, if you're feeling maybe a little too springy on your runs, it probably means you can increase your volume, meaning your legs are ready for more work. And that will, that will make you run slower on easy days. I promise. I promise. So if you're feeling like it just might, honestly, like it might mean you're ready to take that next step in your training. Um, and then... Uh, too springy, trying to run slow. Yeah, I don't know what your stride looks like, so you might be a little bit of a bouncer, and that's okay. Um, you don't want to bounce too much, but it's okay to have a little bit of spring. But anyway, that would be my answer. Good question. That's that's awesome. I love uh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna take one from email here now. Let me just find it. Okay, let's see. So this is from Kurt. He asked. Let's see. Okay, he's basically saying that uh, this year has been a little bit of a wreck. Um, he has some major IT band issues about a month ago, started having these issues where my perceived effort was just way off. Uh, he's running slower paces, but have, having shortness of breath. Oh my goodness. This is kind of long here. Let me just see if I can find, um, okay. Basically. Okay. Let me see. I'm still having the cough. Okay. Hold on. Let me just get to the question. One. Okay. I think I understand it now. And Kurt is basically struggling with some shortness of breath, um, kind of headaches and some coughing. Um, yeah, just a little, just kind of a tough time on the health side of things. And he's basically asking if he should run a race or not run a race. And Kurt, it sounds actually a little more serious than just like a standard sickness. So I would lean toward figuring it out completely before pushing ahead with another, your next race. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, anyway, Kurt goes into detail, everybody, and just kind of a rule of thumb. Again, I think, again, it gets back to the whole question about upper right-hand corner, fitness versus freshness. And um, I'm all about getting fit, but I'm also all about not going into a hole because if you arrive at the starting line, either overtired, overtrained, or in this case, um, sick, you're just not going to have a great race day. Anyway, Kurt, that would be my recommendation for now is just to rest Make sure you get that sickness figured out and then pick up your training as soon. And who knows, Kurt, maybe it's a little related to the weather changing. I, I don't know. Like, it's about to warm up here in North America, so that's exciting. I think everybody's ready for some warmer temperatures and all. So anyway, that is it, everybody. We made it through all the questions. Keep them coming. I'm going to print off more for next week. 
Hopefully we can get the live stream going I, sooner rather than later. I'm hoping it's not until July. Holy guacamole, but we shall see. All right. Thank you for watching this second video. And again, if I didn't answer your question, I will put them in the box for next week. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Woo! That was fun. Not as fun as live streaming, but it was fun. It was fun. See you tomorrow.